The minimum amount of energy required for electrons to be emitted from a metal surface. That is the work function, 10.1. Let's look at 10.2. Prove by means of an appropriate calculation that the work function of the cathode is 3.68 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. What's happening here? Let's look at our question statement. In a photoelectric effect experiment, the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons ejected from a certain metal surface is 4.48 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. When the wavelength of the incident light is increased by 50%, the maximum kinetic energy decreases to 1.76 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So let's go ahead and look at our situation. When light of an unknown wavelength is shown on the metal, the maximum kinetic energy is 4.48 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Let's go ahead and set up that equation and see what we're going to have. We know that Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light divided by the wavelength is equal to the work function plus the maximum kinetic energy. Planck's constant is a constant. We can leave it as it is. C, speed of light, we can leave it as it is. And the wavelength, which is unknown at this point, we're going to leave that as it is. The work function is what we're looking for. Obviously, we're going to leave it as it is. So the only thing we are substituting for here is E K max. Let's go ahead and see how that will look like. So we're going to have H C divided by wavelength being equal to the work function plus E K max. E K max is 4.48 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. This is equation one. When the wavelength is increased by 50%, the maximum kinetic energy decreases to 1.76 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So how is our equation going to look like? We still have H, we still have C, but instead of having wavelength, it is increased by 50%. So we're going to have 1.5 wavelength. That is what you get when you increase a quantity by 50%. This is equals to the work function plus EK max, which is 1.76 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. This is equation two. So we need to play around with these two equations and ultimately get the value of the work function. Well, let's get rid of this 1.5. So that we can have HC divided by wavelength and equate the two equations. How can we possibly do that? We can multiply by 1.5 on the left hand side and on the right hand side. If we do that, we're going to have H multiplied by C divided by wavelength being equals to 1.5 work function plus 1.76 times 10 to the minus 19 multiply by 1.5 so we can equate hc divided by wavelength if we do that we're gonna get 1.5 work function plus 1.76 times 10 to the minus 19 multiplied by 1.5 being equals to the work function plus 4.48 times 10 to the minus 19. Let's take the work function to the left hand side and 1.76 times 10 to the minus 19 multiplied by 1.5 to the right hand side. 1.5 work function minus work function that is going to be 0 0.5 work function. This is equals to 4.48 times 10 to the minus 19 minus 1.76 times 10 to the minus 19 multiplied by 1.5. We divide both sides by 0 0.5. Our work function is going to be equals to 3.68 times 10 to the minus 19. We are dividing both sides by 0 0.5. That is 10.2. Let's go ahead and look at 10.3. Let's find the initial wavelength of the incident light. Uh, we have the work function and a couple of equations. Let's use equation 1. It looks easy on the eye. 
So H multiplied by C divided by wavelength is equals to the work function plus E K max. The work function is 3.68 times 10 to the minus 19 plus 4.48 times 10 to the minus 19. So the wavelength is going to be equals to plex constant. That is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 34 multiplied by the speed of light 3 times 10 to the power 8 divided by 3.68 times 10 to the minus 19 plus 4.48 times 10 to the minus 19. The wavelength is equal to 2.45 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. That is 10.3. Let's answer some conceptual questions. 10.4 and 10.4.1. How does each of the following affect the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons? State only increases, decreases, or remain the same. We are interested in E K max. All right. And then 10.4.1, using incident light of a shorter wavelength. If we're using incident light of a shorter wavelength, that increases the frequency. If the frequency increases, E K max increases. So the answer to 10.4.1 is increases let's look at 10.4.2 using a cathode with a higher work function well ek max if you rearrange one of the equations we have you will get e minus the work function so using a photo cathode with a higher work function will decrease ek max so the answer to 10.4.2 is decreases 10.4.3 using incident light of a greater intensity. The intensity just increases the number of photons being sent to the cathode. It doesn't affect the frequency whatsoever. So the answer to 10.4.3 is it remains the same.